This is part five of the implications of eschatology, and I just touched briefly on Matthew chapter 24, uh, which is the Olivet Discourse. Actually, the Olivet Discourse in Matthew's Gospel goes from cha is chapter 24 and 25, and I have a full exposition of both uh, 24 and 25 in my book, Last Day's Madness. And I have a shorter exposition of Matthew chapter 24 up through verse 34 in my book, Is Jesus Coming Soon? Uh, and what I want to do is just go back a little bit because this is, the, this is the key passage that so many people turn to in addition to the book of Revelation to indicate that, that uh, we're living in the last days because all these things are taking place uh, today. But as we saw in the previous session, Jesus said very, uh, very clearly, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. And as I pointed out, the Greek word translated generation is, is, uh, is the, in fact the correct translation. Some have tried to get away, get around this by saying, well, it really should be translated or could be translated as race. Uh, the problem with that is there is an, another Greek word that should be translated race, although they look the same and pronounced similarly, uh, they are in fact different words. Um, and every time, every time Ganea is used in Matthew's Gospel, it always refers to generation, never refers to race. You can see this in the genealogy uh, in, in Matthew's Gospel. Uh, it says here, therefore all the generations from Abraham to David are four, 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the time of Christ, 14 generations. And there is the word genea, and you could never substitute the word race there. And I, in fact, I would argue the way, simply, uh, simple way to do this is to find every time the word genea appears in Matthew's gospel and try to substitute the word race, and it just doesn't work. And it doesn't work here in Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Uh, the use of the, wor of the word this, which is a near demonstrative, talk, is, is, is another indication that Jesus is talking about that particular generation. This refers to something that is near, that refers to something that is far away. If Jesus had a future generation in mind, he would have said that generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Then there is the, uh, the, the, uh, the idea that if you go through Matthew's Gospel, every time Jesus uses this generation, it always refers to the generation to whom he is speaking. It never refers to a future generation. So there's no way around this particular passage, and this is why someone like Bertrand Russell and later Bart Ehrman saw this passage as a key indicator that Jesus said he was going to return in some capacity before that particular generation passed away. There's no getting around it. And uh, so that means everything prior to verse 34 actually refers to events of that particular generation leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem, which we know took place in uh, A.D. 70 when the Roman armies led by Titus came in and uh, uh, destroyed the, uh, the, this, the city and destroyed the temple. And there are other keys in here uh, that you, you can note. Verse 6, and you will be hearing wars of rumors of wars. Uh, and uh, verse 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation. So the audience reference here is that particular audience. Uh, I already looked at verse 14. Uh, where uh, the, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world. The, the, the Greek word there is oikomene, it's not the Greek word cosmos. Then look at verse 15, Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Luke's version of this says when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. And so here's another clear indication that this is, a, this is something that took place before that particular generation passed away. Look at the, the locale of this. This isn't a worldwide conflagration. This is something that is local. Verse 16, let, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. If this were worldwide, there would be no place to flee. Now, this, is obvious, uh, this is an obvious reference to a local judgment on Judea surrounding the city of Jerusalem and more particularly the destruction of the temple uh, the temple that Jesus said, not one stone here will be left upon another. We can see the locality here again. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to get the things out that are in his house. Uh, again, this is local. We, no one would say that to, to anybody else in the world today. We don't, we don't uh, 
have flat roofs and, and, and uh, railings around our rooftops because that's, that's not the way modern uh, housing is done here in, in other parts of the world. Uh, let him who is um, in the field not turn back to get his cloak. Uh, again, this is, this is obviously something to do with a, 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 a conditions a long, long time, time ago. But woe to those who are with child and to those who nurse babes in those days, but pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. Uh, again, uh, the Sabbath is, at least in, in, in today, the Sabbath is a uniquely uh, a Jewish uh, observance. This, we don't celebrate the Sabbath here uh, around the world as they do, did in Jerusalem. They, in fact, if you read the, the New Testament, it talks about a Sabbath day's journey. And so, so the audience reference, you, uh, the, the local conditions, Judea, uh, the, the circumstances around how people lived, uh, flat roofs, uh, Sabbath, and, and so forth. This is a clear indication that Jesus is talking about events that are, in fact, local to them. Now, some people get, uh, you know, confused about this because of this great tribulation. For then there will be a great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever shall. Uh, again, you have to take the context here. Uh, this, this, this was the, the end of their world, the destruction of the temple, which meant that everything related to the uniqueness of, of Israel was going to be gone. The animal sacrifices would be gone. The special status of Israel as a, as a holy nation would be gone. This was, in fact, the greatest tribulation uh, that Israel had ever suffered because the sin that, uh, that brought this about was the greatest sin that ever that, that Israel ever committed, and that was the rejection of their Messiah. Now, this wasn't all Jews, obviously. The first, first Christians were, in fact, Jews. The, the day of Pentecost, there were Jews living uh, in Israel from every nation under heaven. Uh, there were tens of thousands, some would say hundreds of thousands of Jews who embraced Jesus as the promised Messiah. It was those who held on to the particulars of the Old Covenant uh, who, and uh, who, who, re, who remained in Jerusalem throughout all this that brought about the destruction and judgment. So this isn't, again, not to, this isn't talking about a worldwide judgment because it wasn't a worldwide sin. It was a very local sin for a particular generation. Uh, there are some other things here that, 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 that play into this. Uh, verse 27 for just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, and if you back, go back through the Old Testament, uh, we had looked, uh, I made mention of Isaiah chapter 19 and Micah chapter 1, and there are other pl places in there where, where, where coming uh, in judgment is, is not a unique thing. It is something that, uh, that is common in the Old Testament. We also saw in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, where Jesus promises to come in judgment against local churches. This was neither a judgment on Jerusalem in AD 70, nor was it a, an end time judgment upon the world. So this judgment here is in fact local. Some say, well, lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west. Well, again, that's, that's local. Um, when lightning flashes in Texas or in New Mexico or in other parts of the world, uh, we don't see it. We only see it from horizon to horizon. This is once again a local judgment. Uh, verse 29, but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. This language is taken directly from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 13, and is an indication of, a, of the fall of a nation. And in, in the particular case in Isaiah chapter 13, it is the fall of Babylon. And in fact, if you get into the book of Revelation, and I don't have time to go through all of that, uh, Israel is actually depicted as Babylon in the book of Revelation. Uh, and the sun, moon, and stars is an indication of of, of nationhood. We see that in our, our, our own flags. The United States is represented by 50, 50 stars. You have Japan represented uh, by the sun. You have Muslim nations represented by the moon and the star. Nearly all flags around the world have, have taken the language of stellar phenomena and have, and have indicated that in their, in, in their own national um, representation. The same with Israel. Uh, Israel in uh, Genesis chapter 37 is depicted as sun, moon, and stars. 
Uh, and uh, you get into the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter uh, 12, I believe it is, is where uh, the, uh, the, this woman is dressed. Uh, she has a, a, a crown of 12 stars. She's standing on the moon and she's draped with the sun, which is again representative of Israel. And so when the stars and the sun and the moon are up and they give off light, we're seeing here at, at a time of blessing. When the sun, moon, and stars go dark and fall, this is a sign of judgment. Um, and the son, of, the son of man who will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the land will mourn. Again, this is an indication of Israel. The translations have earth here, but the Greek word for earth and, and um, uh, land is exactly the same. But since tribes are mentioned here, this, these are the tribes of Israel. They will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. It's the same language that is used in Matthew chapter 26 where Jesus is before the high priest and Jesus says you will see the Son of Man, you will, from now on actually, from now on you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this was considered blasphemy and this was the kind of the final straw that ended up getting Jesus crucified. Now, Jesus was the Son of Man. He was the one who was going to ascend to the Father and that's exactly what took place. And uh, I, I don't have time to go through more of this. Again, I was, would have you reference my book, uh, Is Jesus Coming Soon in Last Day's Madness, where I deal with verse 31, um, the, the fig tree illustration here. This is, if it's representative of Israel, this is a leaves-only tree, Matthew chapter 21. Jesus sees the tree. He curses the fig tree. He says there'll never be, there'll never be leaves on it again. This is not a, a reference to Israel becoming a nation again. It has nothing to do with that at all. Even dispensationalist John Walford, for example, maintains that this is not an indication of Israel becoming a nation again. It's simply a parable. You see leaves on a tree, you know that summer is near. In fact, when you go to Luke's version of the Olivet Discourse, you will find Luke says the fig tree and all the trees. Uh, so uh, then, then we're back down to uh, verse 33. Even so, you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near right at the door. Jesus had a future generation. Even so, you too, when they see all these things, recognize that he is at the, at the door, near right at the door. Then truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. So audience reference, the locale taking place in Judea, comparing Scripture with Scripture. There's nothing in this passage which indicates that Jesus is describing some future great tribulation period, either before, after, or during a, uh, a, uh, the, the, the rapture. This is a, a, a description of events leading up to and including the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place in A.D. 70.